it and I guess they responded and they had to put out an apology. But the apology might be one of the best apologies I've ever seen because you can genuinely see that they don't actually give a fuck. They don't actually care, which I, I don't have to say. It's kind of refreshing, you know? Like, they, 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 they knew what they were doing. They wanted to support their friend. They didn't care about the allegations. They most likely don't believe the allegations. They believe their friend and they wanted to support him. So it was kind of refreshing to see them look like they just woke up or like they just fucked or something and they're going through the motions. So it, it feels like to me, they writ that letter knowing it was going to get leaked because probably it's public record or whatever it may be. They knew it was going to get out there and they were prepared to then do the whole apology thing and pretend like they're sorry. That's what it kind of feels like. They did it, you know, they did it knowing full well what would kind of transpire after the fact. And just going through the motions of kind of going. And then I'll obviously give my opinion on the other side. But it's an interesting perspective to see on this, like supporting your friend regardless. So let's play them apologizing for the letter that they wrote in support of Danny Matheson. We are aware of the pain that has been caused by the character letters that we wrote on behalf of Danny Masterson. We support victims. We have done this historically through our work and will continue to do so <laughs> in the future. A couple months ago, Danny's family reached out to us and they asked us to write character letters to represent the person that we knew for 25 years so that the judge could take that into full consideration relative to the sentencing. The letters were not written to question the legitimacy of the judicial system or the validity of the jury's ruling. They were intended for the judge to read um, and not to undermine the testimony of the victims or re-traumatize them in any way. We would never want to do that. <laughs> and we're sorry <laughs> if that has taken place. Our heart goes out to every single person who's ever been a victim yeah, of sexual right. assault, sexual abuse, or rape. Again, pretty pretty well done to be fair i love the bit where they like looked at each other lovingly like in the agreement like you know like that kind of stuff like it was pretty well done um i thought mila kunis's performance was a little bit more convincing she obviously spoke closer to the microphone she had a little bit more she was had a little bit more like fake empathy i think there's a lot of contempt in ashton kutcher's approach he generally didn't want to be there he didn't think they did anything wrong but i think mila kunis definitely provided a better acting presentation she she sold it a bit better like oh my god i'm so sorry like i had no idea this would cause this level of hurt and i just want to let you guys know that we are advocates for this and that we're all going to support like something in the beginning for our work we've always supported Vic. like what what are you even talking about anyway made up whatever the point of all this is to say this i find it interesting how unwilling people especially in hollywood are to cut off friends that have been accused of like heinous crimes I find that very strange, personally. Especially when you think about the level of these guys. These guys are a really good example. Ashton Kutcher, if I'm not mistaken, is somebody that's a... He's an actual entrepreneur, more so than he is an actor nowadays. He's an early investor in all these big startup apps and stuff like Uber and stuff. I remember seeing him on different panels, talking in fucking startup conferences and stuff. He's made a lot of money outside of acting, probably even more than he's done in, in acting. So he's, at, he's in a position in life now where he doesn't really need to be involved in the, you know, in the game of clout and celebrity and stuff. He can just chill with his money and his wife and his family and hang out. So the fact that he would willingly get himself involved in this messy situation is pretty insane. Thinking about, you know, the fact that he's been able to sort of like leave Hollywood on his own terms, do things as he wants to do them. Now he's suddenly, you know, wading in the mud and having people basically call him out online and stuff and try and cancel him. It's a really odd thing to do. So, I'm really confused why Hollywood people seem to be uncapable of doing it because I think in real life, regular people, like there's been times at work where somebody's been accused of something, I don't know, maybe bullying somebody in your office and that could turn into a bit of a black mark on them to the point that people want to ignore them, they don't want to hang out with them anymore. But for some reason, celebrities, the ones that you'd think have more to lose by who, with who they associate with because that's regular civilians, no one cares who you hang around with. But if you're if you're a celebrity and you hang around with somebody that's got like a sketchy past, it can look bad on you. So I'm really confused why these guys who care a lot about their image, um, they care a lot about clout, they care a lot about their influence and what how they're perceived, why they would be so willing to kind of 
back somebody that does certain things like this and again this isn't unique the stuff i spoke about before the chris Alia stuff the brian callen stuff like they've lost a lot of stuff in terms of you know opportunities in the industry but for the most part most of their friends have remained none of their friends even though they've both been accused of things that you would think that most men who have daughters who have families would be a little bit like icked out about it hasn't really affected their friendships no one's been no one's looked no one looks at them differently they've still got the same friends for the most part and i'm really confused why that is the case like why did why did why did these guys not have a line like i said before my line is rape and diddling you rape and you diddle you're out of here but again maybe that's the whole point of friendship maybe friends are so crucial to people and the fact that you have a friend you love for 25 years no one wants to possibly you know chuck that friendship away because it's something that you can't get again maybe that's what's happening here i don't really understand it personally because i just think if a friend of yours does that you should feel a little bit betrayed too because they hid a part of them you know they hid like a monstrous part of themselves from you that you weren't aware of and now it obviously makes you look bad because you're their friend you, you should take that personally as well but the fact that they don't it's just really strange to me. I cannot understand it in the slightest. There's a part of me, again, like I said, there's a part of me that kind of respects how um, ambivalent and nonplus they are about it. The fact that they generally look like they don't give a fuck. The fact that they just look like they rolled out of bed and they don't want to be there and they're reading off a script. There's a part of me that feels like, you know what? These are actual friends because they are riding for this guy until the end and they have a lot more to lose than he does and they're still riding for him. So it shows that they obviously had a close friendship. But should you be required to publicly demolish your friends? Like, let's say they don't believe what happened. Let's say they, they, they generally believe he didn't do it. Or even if they do believe he didn't do it, they don't care because he's their friend. Should you, should you be required to come out and, perp and, and you know, publicly chastise your friends and flog them in the public? Like, what is that? Who's that actually serve? Who are you actually appeasing? You know, like, if they're your friend and you didn't do nothing, are you allowed to just continue being their friend? Does that make you look bad because your friend got convicted of rape, but you're still their friend? How does that make you a rapist? You know, are you just guilty by association? I don't know. I've got mixed feelings on that. What do you guys think in the chat? One big thing called said that he called his agent and then Danny when he found out the dead Yeah, cool. Yeah, I'll say okay. Z great point. So the funny thing about this whole thing, right, has been how much people have been unearthing the story of Ajahn Kutcher, because most of you will know he was involved in um in the serial killer manhunt thing, right? I think in a conviction or something, because one of those girls that he was dating unfortunately was a victim of this serial killer. And I think the story goes, he was going to take her out um, on, on, a, on a date. He pulls up to her house. He finds a door ajar. And obviously she'd been murdered in there. And he obviously had to testify to that. Now, because of all this stuff going on, people have dug up the actual account of what happened. And it doesn't paint him in a good light. Because they're trying to say that when Ashton, basically one of the part is saying that this was a girl that he was just hooking up with. Like she was basically a, a friends with benefits, but he was dating somebody else. So he was cheating on his girlfriend with this girl. He pulls up to the place. He finds the situation. Instead of calling the police, he immediately called his agent or something. And he spent an hour within the vicinity of the house discussing with his agent or manager what to do next. So he didn't even, you know, call the police straight away to attend their help and stuff. He waited an hour speaking on the phone with his agent or representative, allegedly, before somebody came down and helped. So it kind of made him look bad because I think, you know, the way he told it, he made it seem like he was a bit of a hero when actually, you know, he was looking out for himself more. So again, this whole case has just put, you know, more unnecessary intention on stuff that people probably weren't thinking about on him, which is a bit crazy. Um ashton has that white person look a smile like a stranger i've never been to a road with danny <laughs> this is a sad yet true uh figuring out if he's an accomplice smart i will concede this az both of them are very smart and they would know sentencing guidelines etc it's not likely they thought that they were writing a letter to the guy probation okay cool true um very true uh, uh, Otia, uh what you guys saying i don't need to see anyone in public with a delir anymore no um your uh, um I don't. That's the thing. Uche, you're thinking right. I don't see anyone being seen public in Delia. You may be right, but I guess it's the wrong way to look at it because I'm always looking at it from a perspective of a regular person. I don't know anybody that's been convicted of rape. I don't know if you guys do. I don't know anybody that's convicted of rape or even or even accused. I don't know anybody particularly. But I would assume if you did get convicted or accused of rape, you would lose a few friends if you're a regular person. No? Don't you guys agree? Don't you think some friends wouldn't call you back? 
But for the most part, those guys, Callan, the Leas and stuff, they've generally got the same group of friends. Yes, they've missed out on some, but they still have some friends. Like those guys aren't like, you know, Brian, Ka sorry, Brendan and Eric Griffin aren't afraid to sit next to them. I don't think in regular, I think in regular life, if you did that, you'd be ostracized from your little community. I think so anyway. What do you think happened? Um, no Asian, me either. Uh, Mila aged like milk. I have a grandfather in prison for murder who was an American most wanted. I have some background on this. Yeah, so th th that grandfather of yours, Otia, do people, do your family go and visit him in prison? That's a good indication of whether or not they're still friends or they're still cool. A friend of mine accidentally told me he was a rapist. <laughs> like that, like that, who's that, who's that guy? That Brian, that, who's that guy? That, that small guy that told that story about, you know, sneak raping somebody like fucking psycho. Um, they cancelled. Uh, what if Madison has a dirt on them so they wrote letters to cover themselves? Yeah, maybe, maybe that's true. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Um, I don't want to go over it too much because it's a fucking dicey story. Want to get into some other shit? Um, so let's kind of move on from that one. Bear with me a second. Da, 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 da. 